Hi everyone, my name is Abraham Sebek and welcome to SAT2 Biology. Alright, so now we're up to lecture three. Last time we did chemistry of life and I went over the different types of atomic bonding, right? The polar covalent, the non-polar covalent, and the ionic. And we also went over the molecular bonding, such as hydrogen bonding, being very important. Now let's take a look at um, carbon's use uh, and its role in, in the environment and, and in life. Okay, so first thing, carbon's properties, there are three major properties that we have to make sure we know. First one is carbon forms four covalent bonds. And so, nice easy way to think about it. Now carbon has four valence electrons in its outer shell. So it wants to bond four times, like it's doing here in methane, right? So that would be one example, would be a methane molecule. Okay, but then we would also think about another thing, right? What about this? Sometimes you'd see a double bond at O. This is a really important carbonyl group, right? And so we'll just put formaldehyde over here like this. Or maybe you've seen carbon with two double bonds that look like that, okay? Carbon dioxide. Or even in the case of making hydrocyanic acid, we'd see something like that with a triple bond. Okay, so all of these are gonna come into play. And so just keep in mind, you must count four bonds for carbon. If it doesn't have four bonds, it's not happy. A carbon always gets four covalent bonds. Not ionic, always covalent, and usually nonpolar at that. Okay, because they're very symmetrical. All right, next. Carbon can bond to itself and form these like really long hydrocarbons. And so, for example, this is pentane. Now, pentane, we just count the carbons. There's one, two, three, four, five. Very simple. This one over here, this is a, a form of pentane, right? It's an isomer of pentane. And so I could just put that isomer over here. These are isomers. They basically have the same structure, but they have different, uh, I'm sorry, they have same formula, but different structure. So for example, this molecule over here is C5H12. Same thing goes for down here. This is also C5H12 except their names are different. This one we're going to call pentane, all right? And this one down here, what, I, what would I call that? Well, you number it. One, two, three, four, that would be butane. This would be 2-methylbutane. All right, but this is maybe a little too advanced uh, in terms of chemistry. I just want to point out to you that they like to bond to each other, and they create many of these isomers with one another. We're going to see these isomers when it comes to the sugars, glucose, fructose and galactose, all right? But carbon, just getting the idea behind carbon and this organic thing, right? Because organic means that you have to be made up of both carbon and hydrogen. That's the only way you're organic. You have to have both carbon atoms and hydrogen atoms. All right, so next thing, carbon forms rings. So this is some more organic stuff, right? This is called cyclohexane. Okay, well, this guy over here is called benzene. Notice they form rings with one another. All they really did was add a double bond, alternating double bonds, right? One, two, three, and you made this molecule of benzene. They're attached to a lot of amino acids like tryptophan, phenylalanine, and tyrosine. And so benzene is really important in biology, but not to mention we should just remember that they form rings like in a lot of sugars. You're going to see that carbohydrates, especially the monosaccharide sugars, love to form rings. And so these three things about carbon, what did we just say? We said that carbon forms four covalent bonds. Carbon can bind to itself uh, in long straight chains. In addition, it can also form rings. Notice no matter what, carbon always has four bonds. Right, this looks great. Let's take a look at something else now. So functional groups, if you see any of these side groups attached this, this will really like play out, okay? So for example, if you see OH, this means the hydroxyl group. It's the first one I had put. The hydroxyl group is found in alcohols and it's also found in sugars like monosaccharides. This carbonyl group with the double bonded O is gonna be the branching of what? The carboxyl group over here, okay? And that's just, now the carboxyl group is gonna come very important because this means acid. Anytime I see C double bonded O, OH, I want you guys to think acid. Three kinds of acids are gonna have this. They're gonna be nucleic acids, fatty acids, 
an amino acid. So this is like the acid group, and you should definitely know that. Over here, this is the amino group. Okay, this one becomes very important too. So if you put these two together with a carbon in the middle of them too, you actually have an amino acid. And so this is so important that you recognize these groups. This group over here is called the sulfhydryl group. And what the sulfhydryl group is good at doing is making disulfide bridges. And so we're going to see how proteins fold and how they make these like awesome bridges between each other. In fact, whether or not you have curly or straight hair depends on the number of disulfide bridges you have. All right, and so these are the most important groups. The only group that's not in this picture over here is the phosphate group, and that's going to be important in DNA and in RNA, right? And an ATP, and basically that group, let's see if I can put it right over here. Yeah, that group phosphate would look like this. It would have a P, double bonded O, 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 and O, with all these minuses. Okay, PO4 minus would be the phosphate group. ATP has three of them. DNA has one per nucleotide, and so does RNA. All right, this looks great. So let's move on. Those are the functional groups. Got to know a little bit about the chemistry when we see it, okay? Because the molecular section or the M section of the SAT2 goes over this stuff. And you'll be, you'll be surprised how much they have and how much chemistry they expect you to know. Because bio and chemistry go together, right? Like, like milk and cookies. All right, next thing. Let's take a look at organic molecules. We said that anything with carbon and hydrogen is organic. First, we should know some words like monomers. So look at this picture here. Imagine a monomer or a single unit with these two white circles with the black circle. All right, and now a polymer would just be the monomers repeating, repeating, repeating. And that's what you see over here. This is made up of four monomers. You can call this a tetramer. That's what I had put over here. Monomer, dimer, trimer, tetramer, pentamer, hexamer. Then you go to oligomer, where oligo means few. Polymer means many. Right, next, you should know the two reactions. One of them is dehydration synthesis. So when molecules come together, water leaves. Okay, molecules come together, water leaves. Dehydration means to remove water. Synthesis means to build. Molecules come together, water leaves. Very easy. Hydrolysis is when you add water to break the molecules. So in this sense, add a little water, molecules break. Add a little water, molecules break. Very simple. Okay, we're going to do this with carbohydrates, lipids, and in the next video, proteins and nucleic acids. So let's jump right into carbohydrates. All right, carbohydrates, there's, there's five of them that I think you should know for the SAT2. So we have, the first one is C6H12O6. Okay, this is the same formula for all three. These guys are isomers of one another. Same chemical formula, but different structure. Here's glucose, okay? So glucose is going to be by far the one we talk about the most. It's the primary energy source of the brain. Okay, it's the primary energy source for most cells and pretty much all cells of life. Galactose and glucose can be converted into this, right? When, into galactose and fructose can be converted into glucose and brought into glycolysis during cellular respiration, right? Now, ribose and deoxyribose, just remember that these are the RNA. This is the RNA sugar, and this is the DNA sugar. I want you to keep that in mind when we do nucleic acids in the next lecture. Okay, so this looks really good. One more thing about monos oh, carbohydrates. What are they for? Quick energy. So living things require carbohydrates in the form of sugar, all right? It gets broken down, so you can get your sugar from eating bread, that's starches. You can get it from eating sugars, or you can get it from eating dietary fiber. That's like your vegetables and your fruits, okay? Because they burn, what? They, they, they burn slower. Okay, very nice. Disaccharides, two sugars. Okay, so thinking about two sugars now, uh, we're going to put a glucose and a glucose together. And so when that happens, we just take C6H12O6 plus C6H12O6. All right, and one thing you want to keep in mind is that water leaves. And so when this becomes maltose, an H2O molecule has to exit. And so you're left with c 12 H22, O11, not H24, O12. Water leaves, and then you get every disaccharide you're looking for. Maltose is like what's found in um, malts, beverages, right? Uh, and also uh, in beer, right? And then sucrose 
is table sugar. This is the stuff you put in your coffee, that you bake with, you make cookies and cakes with, right? Sucrose, table sugar. Lactose is milk sugar. And the way I used to remember that is if I saw lactose over here, oh, okay, the lactose has the word lactose in it. This is very simple. Disaccharides look like this. As you can see, this is a picture of sucrose, right, where we take one glucose and one fructose and put them together. I remember water is removed. Okay, next thing. Okay, this is the third level of carbohydrates. We have to know not trisaccharides, but polysaccharides. So what's great is that there are many rings just linked together. Ding, 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 ding. And I put them up here, the most important ones that we should know. So we should know uh, starch, which is plant food storage, right? So another name for it would be amylose. Our saliva has an enzyme named amylase, and it breaks down amylose. Amylose is starch. Okay, and plants store it for those times when it gets really rough, right? They store the extra glucose. Glycogen is how animals store food, and this happens in our liver, okay? So we eat starch, it gets digested into glucose, the glucose is absorbed by the blood, oh, there's too much glucose. Insulin then takes it to the liver, okay? And then of course the liver will turn it into glycogen. So it's amazing how we store it completely different. Then you should know about your cell walls, okay? So cellulose is found in plant cell walls, also known as dietary fiber. This is that stuff we can't digest. Chitin, okay, is found in fungi cell walls, right? And then peptidoglycan is found in bacterial cell walls. Another thing is glycocalyx, right? You might, might want to know about that. This is another picopolysaccharide, and it's found in the extracellular matrix. Okay, now that we've covered carbohydrates, the last organic molecule I'd like to do with you today is lipids. Lipids are gonna come in three different groups. The first group is the triglyceride. So what we have here is a molecule of glycerol. It's one of those tertiary alcohols that have three hydroxyl groups. Okay, and then in addition, what we see here is a saturated triglyceride. Now you have your acid group over here. Remember I said that if you see C double bonded OOH, the H left. Okay, three acid groups. There's another one over here, and there's another one over here. Three nice acid groups. These are fatty acids, okay? And so we have to make sure that we see that we have three fatty acids. And there are three of them just because the name says tri. So you should see that tri means three. Three fatty acids attached to one glycerol. Now they come in two forms. They come in either saturated or unsaturated. So if they're saturated, one easy way to remember that, so just think about the word saturated. This is how I remembered it. Saturated has single bonds and it's a solid. So S, 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 very simple. Saturated has single bonds. Okay, and it is solid at room temperature. And then if you could just remember the unsaturated, now that if you remember saturated fatty acid, then you can easily remember the unsaturated. It's the opposite. They have at least one double bond and they're liquid. And so that should be really nice for you, okay? So that's our triglycerides. They're gonna talk about the saturation of them. Okay, and they're single bonds, which means that they have all the maximum number of hydrogens, right? While the unsaturated ones have less hydrogens and so having too many hydrogens will turn you into a solid. You'll become saturated. Okay, saturated meaning to the maximum. Okay, phospholipids is the other kind of fat. So the, uh, and then remember, fats are great for long-term energy. Uh, phospholipids are found on membranes. Notice I didn't write cell membranes. And the reason for that is because they're found on ER membranes and Golgi membranes and nucleus membrane, peroxisome and vacuole. And what they are are basically this, uh, this, uh, and we'll go over this in, in, when we do the membrane chapter, but I want you to think of two tails over here. So you have your head and you have the tails. Whoops. Head and tails. Okay. And the other thing I want to make sure that you understand is that the head is polar. Okay, the head is polar, which means that it loves water. It is hydrophilic. While the tails are nonpolar or hydrophobic. And so that's why they're tucked away on the inside. And so this picture over here looks really cool because it shows how the cell membrane is set up. Really, only two molecules thick, this tiny veil that separates, it's like an interface between the outside environment and the cytoplasm underneath. Very, very impressive how the cell membrane is only two molecules thick, and yet it's a layer of protection for all cells. And so this becomes very important. 
Okay, and we'll come back to the phospholipids and we start talking about diffusion and transport behind the membrane, okay? But this is just another type of lipid. Last lipid that you should know, okay, they're called sterols or steroids. I'm just gonna draw one for you. So we have, you have a six, wait, let me just fix this, hold on. So you need two hexagons, right? So we'll start off with the first hexagon, like this. Connect another one, like this. Okay, put one on the top, like this. And put, this is pretty much the backbone structure. See how there's four rings? Then the way I remember this was six, 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 five. 66, 65, by right, 66, go upstairs, 65, got it. So these numbers represent the number of sides, and so that's what you're kind of seeing here. All right, so cholesterol is one. It has the word sterol in it, cholesterol, sterol. All right, so cholesterol can be turned into the hormones that we use, such as testosterone, estrogen, and progesterone. But cholesterol, we take in, we eat it, right? And it's used in cell membranes. So this is that same phospholipid we just saw on the previous slide. Cholesterol will wedge into the cell membrane and prevent the cell membrane from becoming too solid. Because the cell membrane, if, it's, if it becomes all of a sudden too viscous and solid, it'll chink up, and all of a sudden gases can't get in there anymore. But cholesterol keeps it fluid and allows nonpolar molecules to get in very, very easily. Testosterone, this is male hormone, gives males their secondary sex characteristics. Estrogen is female, and so is progesterone. These are menstrual cycle hormones. And again, more on this when we do our hormone chapter, but we'll bring up just that they're in the lipid group and they're used as, what, chemical messengers, okay? And they're also used to keep the membrane fluid. All right, so that, that we'll stop right here. That's it for our lecture number three. Okay, guys, keep in mind that you guys should still be studying, all right, and watch the lectures over again if you don't get it the first time. I know it was complicated stuff. All right, guys, until next time, I'll see you later. Have a great day.